chicks. Get some more chicks.
Y'all glad to be in church this morning? Uh, and in spite of and, and, and in spite of what's going on with the video, amen. We still gonna praise and worship God, amen. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. We're gonna not gonna allow that to dictate how we praise God. Amen. I'm just glad to be here, ain't you? Amen. Y'all looking good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to give yourselves a hand for looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to ask Brother Sprightly now when he comes with our scripture. If you know, come on. Good morning, church. We are going to be reading from Psalms 150, Psalms 150. We have a, f a few technical difficulties, so uh, we're going to still worship in spirit and truth. Praise ye the Lord. Everybody there? If you're there, say there. Oh, 
right. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in for fulfillment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sounds of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the pastry and harp. Praise him with the sounds of the timbre and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you so very much, Brother Michael. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before thee, thanking you for your graciousness and your mercy. God, we thank you for your loving kindness. God, we thank you for your mighty hand and your presence in all of our lives. Oh, God, we realize that we can't do nothing without you. But with you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, God, by your permissive will, we're here today. Just, just want to say thank you and give you some honest and sincere praise. They that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you. Lord, we, we have no desire to worship you with just flesh. Lord, with our innermost, with our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, we praise thee, O oh God. Realizing, O oh God, you got all power in your hand. And Lord, we thank you now. God, we ask that you look down upon us as children of God and Lord just have mercy realize oh God that mercy suit our case Lord thank you for grace God thank you for that unmerited favor thank you master oh God I pray Lord that you have your way in this place realizing oh God that we as men and women we are frail we are weak Lord, we have sinned and come short of your glory. But Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on our souls, Lord. We thank you now. And Lord, because of what you did, you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Oh God, we humbly say, Lord, we love you. And we give you the praise and honor you. We will yet give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Jesus. For thou art mighty in power and rich in mercy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God, for even the air that we breathe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence that we are able to, to feel you, Lord. Oh, God, we pray for the sick and the shut-ins all over this land and country. Pray, God, that your peace that surpasses all understanding that will permeate the world that will come and give us a fresh awakening of our, of who you are. You're Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Oh God, we thank you now. We ask it all, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Everybody say amen, amen, and then amen. All right, come on, let's lift him, let's lift him, let's give him Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. We welcome you today, Lord. In spite of what's going on, Jesus, we welcome you in this place. 
We give you honor. We give you the praise. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praises be to our God. Come on, choir. Come on. Let's lift him. Let's lift him. Amen. We want to be a blessing in this atmosphere. Come on, y'all. It's all right to put your hands together. That's right. How many of y'all know that the Lord stepped in?
it all right. He'll make it all right. He'll make it. He'll make it all right. 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 He'll make
Glory be to God. He's worthy to be praised. All right. I'm trying to calm down. I'm getting excited. And that's where it all of it. You ought to get excited when you come into the house of God that, that you know he's working it out on your behalf. Y'all ready? Come on. Good morning. Good morning to all our Mount Olive members, visitors, and virtual families near and far. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Some of our members at home now dealing with some type of sickness and would trade places with us at any given time. Amen. For that, I am grateful. Amen. The way is done here, the gospel will be preached, the sick will be prayed for, and a virtual invitation will be extended to you and your family. These are our weekly announcements. Please remember our weekly Bible study will be held here in the Church Fellowship Hall on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Please join us for the word. Also, please note that for the month of May, it has a fifth Sunday. So therefore, Sunday school will be starting at 9 a.m., following worship services starting at 10 a.m. on time. So please pass the word. But now if you can't make it out to the church, we still have many options and ways to sow a seed in this ministry. As we say every week, you can give on the Givelify app, you can mail it into our post office box, or you can just drop it off here at the church location. Also, the ushers has a meeting scheduled for May 7 at 11 a.m. here in the church sanctuary. Please try to be in attendance. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Brother Dixon. All right now, all right. Our church family, you know what time it is this year. It's that time of year where we celebrate our pastor and first lady. Pastor Jeffrey L. McCauley is celebrating his 13th, did I see that right? Anniversary. Okay, just making sure 13 years anniversary here at Mount Olive. <laughs> Pastors are ordinary human beings with limited energy, time, and strength. They have down days and dry times in their faith walk just as you and I do. But on May 15, we will lift our pastor and first lady with tremendous love. We will have special envelopes available for, to you and your family, which will be out in the church for you until that anniversary day. So just please take advantage of that. And once again, we will be celebrating our pastor Sunday, May 15th at 11 a.m., our guest speaker will be Reverend Dr. Jackie Banks. More information to come. Blessings on your birthdays and anniversaries for the month of May. We celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, accolades for some of our members this month. We have one for Miss Tia Coker. Um, she's celebrating the, um, with the flag court for the most improved. We will have her picture next week to show, but she's doing a wonderful job on the flag court. So when you see her, just congratulate her. <laughs> Miss Tia Coker. Also, it's just a beautiful thing to watch our church family blossom into something wonderful. And they're helping one another, and they would like to invite you guys out. Miss Ashley, she has started a business called Juice and Poppin' Dance Fitness. She's trying to shape all us, whip us all back into shape. 
come here and get your spiritual growth. But if you want to get in shape, you know, get your body in shape, come out and see Ashley. It's for everybody. And it's Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursday right here in Phoenix City at the Regional Rehab Center across from Walmart. So if you feel like getting a little exercise, toning up, please feel free to come out. Like I said, it's for everyone. And she does a wonderful job. And I think that's where she, um, she works at as well. And her mom is very proud, Miss Connie Anderson over there. All right, now I need everyone at this time. Will you please stand up? Please just stand to your feet. We have a special, special birthday celebration. She's not here with us physically, but we feel her love here every Sunday. So right now, we would like to send some love and blessings to her and her family on behalf of every member of this great family of God. We wish her a healthy, partly birthday. And I want you to know, Sister King, that we love you with all our hearts. And happy, and happy, wonderful birthday today. So with that being said, we're going to send you a special birthday shout out from each and every one at this church congregation. Please join us in wishing, singing happy birthday to Sister Cindy King. she mind me telling her age she's 62 today she's 62 and what a blessing that is amen to see 60 anything amen 62 today amen so we pray and hope that if you can some of you can go by the house today we plan the wife and I plan to go by today after church and to help celebrate her birthday today amen so if you're able to do that, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, amen. She would love to see you, amen. She would love to see you, amen. She's in good spirit. Had a chance to go by last week, and uh, she was in good spirit. She was talking strong, and uh, they tell me she's eating a little now. She's eating, yeah, yeah. So, so she's eating, and uh, amen, amen. Sister Coker, she had went by last week. We just had missed her. Uh, they said she had been by, and uh, but yeah, she's doing good, and just continue to pray for her, amen, her and her family, and uh, her husband is not doing the best either, her husband, so, you know, no doubt that's weighing on him to see her like that, uh, so let's pray for that family, and also, Sister uh, Sean Grover, she sends her love, uh, I haven't received a card yet, but she sent a card to tell us thank you. Uh, Thank us, Mount Olive family, for all that we do for them. Amen. And for the food that we send that way. And so she sends her love and she says thank you. Amen. To God be the glory. And also, let me read you this card. Uh, Pastor McCauley and Mount Olive Baptist Church family, it's sometimes easy to forget that there are nice people out there doing nice things for others. Thanks for being such a special Reminder, Sister Josephine Fraser, thanks again. Amen. To God be the glory. And also, we have uh, Sister uh, Latanya Peabody. Uh, her mom is not doing the very best. Uh, her mom is uh, Anita Evans, Sister Anita Evans. Amen. And so, last I talked with her, 
she's in good spirit herself, but just to watch her mom go through what she's going through, you know, it's taking a toll on them. And so we just be in prayer for the Peabody and the Evans family. That's the Tanya Peabody. Amen. Uh, and also, Sister Brenda Key, uh, she's in rehab in Columbus. Sister Brenda Key, uh, she's uh, in rehab in Columbus, and her husband, Michael Key, uh, both of which uh, they're kind of sickly. And so they solicit our prayers as well. And Deacon Willie Robertson uh, got word that uh, his family had to take him to uh, the emergency room on yesterday. Uh, found out that he had a touch of pneumonia. He's in Birmingham. He's in Birmingham. So please, ma'am, please, sir, pray for them. And also the Dixon and the White family, according to Sister Shirley, uh, all right, Brother Charles, his, his family, they're having to go through an ordeal as well. So keep them in prayer, the Dixon and, and the White family. Amen? Amen. And also my brother-in-law, Melvin Madden, if you will, remember him in your prayers as well. Amen. It's good to see uh, Sister Sally Greer. Good to see Sister uh, Claudette's mom, uh, Miss Doris the Twin. Good to see you this morning, dear. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else visiting with us this morning? Would you like to raise your hand? No visitors. Okay, we all homebound. All right, to God be the glory. Let's give this choir a hand. Can we do that? Amen, amen. I just thank God for what God is getting ready to do. I, you know, I, I know what it looks like. I'm looking at it like you are. But I'm, I'm just trusting God. You know, when all else fails, we just have to trust God, don't we? Just have to trust God. Oh, let me say that. It just comes to me. I want to thank Sister Howard. Uh, every day, or every other day, Sister Howard, she's going to send me a text. She's going to encourage me and my wife. If not every day, every other day, she's going to send a little picture, a little scene, or something. And, and, and I can just about tell it's her because it's between 10.30 and 11 o'clock, and, uh, and the phone goes off. I said, that, that's Sister Loretta right there. When I look at the phone, guess what? It's her. She's always encouraging us, and that's a good thing. Amen? She don't have to do that, but she do. Amen. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. Thank God for these musicians this morning. Amen. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, Reverend White and I, we're solo today. I know that the other, other ministers, uh, some are out of town, and then there's some who's supporting. Uh, Reverend Morgan, you know, of course, his anniversary is today, his seventh pastoral anniversary this morning. And so that's where they are. Amen. I'm glad all of y'all didn't go over there. Amen. Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. To God be the glory. Amen. So we're glad to see a portion of our deacons here this morning. Amen. They, they look good, don't they? Amen. To God be the glory. All right. All right. Let us keep uh, all of our sick and our shut in uh, in prayer. Uh, uh, Sister Olivia, the mother of our church, amen. Remember her as well. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to get going. I know that time is pressing, but you know what? I'm not worried about time this morning. I thank God for time, but I'm not just not worried about that. You know what I'm saying? Amen. I'm being led by the Spirit. I'm being led by the Spirit. And that's what all of our desires ought to be, is to be led by the Spirit. To God be the glory. All right. Come on, choir. We ready? Is this... Y'all can join and y'all can help us too. Come on. We're going to make one big choir. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. 
clearing the way. I started running, started shouting. I had no room to doubt him. I tell you that I, I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Oh, it was early one morning, Come on. just about the break of day. You know, Jesus, he touched me and he washed all my sin away. I started running, started shouting. I had no room to doubt it. I tell you that I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Save me, save me. It was the Holy Ghost. Set me free. It was the Holy Ghost. Changed my life. It was the Holy Ghost. About the break of day, Jesus, he touched me and he washed all my sin away. I started running, started shouting. I had no room to down. I tell you that I, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, to God be the glory. Father, we come now and we pause, oh God, and Lord, to say thank you again, and Lord, that ask that you have your way in this place. Pray, God, that we can see ourselves in this word today as it relates to being a good steward or a good manager over what you have given us to do and be. Lord, we thank you now. Pray, God, that the Holy Spirit move in a mighty way. 
Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. as follows. I'm, I'm reading from the NIV version. He also said to his disciples that was a certain rich man who had a steward. And an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, hmm, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. Well, I can't dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I'm put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? Word of God, the people of God. All right. All right. I want to talk from this subject. There it is. Lessons from an unjust steward. We're going to look at some of the pros and cons of an unjust steward. I'm hoping that we can look into this lesson today and we find ourselves as to where we measure up as it relates to our stewardship. This is Jesus' story of an unrighteous manager or steward, it teaches us lessons about how, how shrewd businessmen or Christians alike or stewards alike can be as it relates to doing what God have called them to be and to do. Hmm. Think about that. Where do you and I measure up? with our stewardship. When you, when you think about your ministry, what God have called you to be and to do, and you got to take it personal. Where do you and I line up? Are we all we can be in the Lord? Are we doing all we can do for the cause of the kingdom? Hmm. We're going to focus in on today some of the cons of this unjust steward. In this parable, Jesus 
He's, there was four things about this unjust manager. And we can see it right off the bat. First of all, this manager, he was charged with embezzlement. What is embezzlement? Taking something that is not yours. Have I got a witness here? In other words, he was wasting his master's good. The manager was in charge of all of his master's property and all of his goods. Therefore, it was easy for him to use the goods for his own purpose just as he desired. When we think about what God has entrusted us with, all of it belongs to him. Really, God wants to see how are we going to take care of it. How are we going to manage what God has given us as it relates to pastors, ministers, choir members, deacons, ushers, hostesses, financial commitments, trustees, Ushers, media personnel. What are you doing with what God gave you? Are, are, are we stealing from God? <laughs> you can look at it as which, when we fall short in doing what God has called us to be and do, in a roundabout way, yes, we are stealing. Because we're like Uncle Sam, you know, this slogan, be all you can be. We're not, we're not doing all we could be doing for the cause of Christ and in uplifting mankind. And we have to take a self-evaluation of it because we have to look at ourselves. God has given every human being any number of goods to watch over and take care of. What about life itself? What about your life? How are we taking care of life? With it, you know, just look at self. What about family? What about your talents? What about that? What about our homes and our personal possessions? What about our property and our money? Every individual is guilty of embezzlement, uh -oh, of misusing the goods to some degree. You mean me? But, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm pastor of a great church. I mean, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. You got to start with me. But I, I'm a minister. I, I carry the word of God. I, I, I preach the word of God. I mean, I'm on my post every week, every Wednesday, you know, Bible study. I'm here when nobody else comes. You know, I'm, I'm here, Lord. I, every one of us, from the pulpit all the way down, are guilty of embezzlement. He was guilty of embezzlement. So, look at yourself. Where do I measure up? Is there room for improvement? Hmm? Yes, there's room for improvement. Is there room for improvement in the choir? Of course. What about the musician? Of course. They ain't here to hear it, but it's, it, it's room for improvement, isn't it? <laughs> huh? I'm just being honest with you. Hmm? First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. You don't have it on the screen, but I'm going to read it in your hearing. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Oh, Lord, be found faithful. I may 
may not have it all together in doing per se or not doing. But I got to be found faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm -hmm. And then, even though the manager was charged with embezzlement, Scripture says, and he said, also unto his disciples, there was a certain man, rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And, verse 2, it would have us to know that this manager was required to prepare a final accounting. He had to give an account of his stewardship. Now, I, I, I got to back up off of him just for a minute. All of us in here, from the pulpit all the way down, will have to one day give an accounting of our stewardship. I, 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 can't, I can't do it for you. No, no. You can't do it for me. All of us as an individual, as a person, as a human being, as a spirit, have to stand before God and give an account of our own personal stewardship. Now, I can't get no plan in that. That's preaching. It's good preaching. I ain't, I ain't hooping to you right now. I'm, I'm just talking to you. I want you to get it. I want you to get an understanding of it. He had to give an account of it. The accounting would not only give the master proof of the wrongdoing, but listen, it would also give him the facts he needed to know the status of his estate. The master heard about the embezzlement that the manager had been misusing his good. He heard about it. He, he hadn't got all of his facts yet, but he knew something wasn't right. So he thought he would get an accounting of it. He had to tally it up. See what was what. People may not have all the facts about me and you, but guess who does? Preach my calling. Huh? Think about it. Holy Spirit speaking. When people think they know, God already knows. Yes, he already knows. Hmm? Yeah. So I got to back up off of him and let's look at us. See, this is, this is for our benefit today. See? Though, though the full evidence against the manager was not yet fully known, but the fact remains that he was given a chance to prove all oh law, his trust and faithfulness, and he failed miserably. He was given a chance to come clean. Hey, look, man, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm, master, I, I was wrong. I've been taking this. I've been doing that. He had a chance to do that. But he failed on that part. How many of us have fallen short in that area. Had a chance to get it right, come clean, start all over again, but we failed because we thought that nobody see us or nobody knows or God, he, he was asleep that night. But God is the God of Israel. He neither sleep. You know what? God don't even doze off. He neither sleep nor he slumbers. So he sees it all. He knows it all. So we may as well come clean. Because God himself, he, he examined the heart of a man. And what's in your heart that needs to be revealed to God? What's in my heart that needs to be revealed to God? What is it that I need to confess to God? Man, this is good stuff. This is, this is making us, us aware. There's some things that we, we, we got to do. We got to do. There's too much happening. Everything that's going on in life is short. 
nothing like sure. So the steward had to give an account. He had a chance to come clean. But the steward, he would be dismissed from his master's estate. He said, okay, since you're not going to come clean, you're not going to repent, get out. I don't need no thieves hanging around me. So he put him out. But he had a chance to get it right and stay there and do it right. That's what he said. He said, verse 2, And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. Since he didn't do that, thou mayest be no longer steward. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Look, I don't care what we got, what we will obtain, materialistic-wise. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, what? But after this, the judgment. So that tells me I'm going to leave it all. So why? What's, what's the problem? Why is it that we got to, you know, cheat, steal, and get, 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 and greed, and don't help nobody? And we're going to leave it all anyway. You ain't going to even have it. You don't want so-and-so. You can't help so-and-so, but you ain't going to have it one day. But then guess what? After you leave, somebody going to have it. Huh? Somebody going to have it, didn't you, Luke? Yeah. One day when we leave this, this old world, somebody's going to be driving our car, somebody else. Somebody's going to be living in our home. And if the clothes fit them, they'll be wearing our clothes. I mean, you might well be on the wedding. Am I right about it? See? Am I, come on. Yeah. So guess what? Somebody already measuring you up. You just don't know it. <laughs> Somebody already measuring you up. Yeah, that'll look, that'll look good on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to leave it all. Yeah, that car clean. Boy, I ain't, I ain't never been able to afford it now, but one day I, I'll, have, I'll have one. You know what I'm saying? We're going to leave it all. What are you saying? So the final accounting is that death when we have to stand before God. Now, look, when we go Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 23 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Very, very, I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Hmm? Come on. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a what? needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. He can get there, but something keeps him from getting there. His possessions, his wealth, his popularity, his social status. He's more impressed with things, and he cannot depart from it. And Jesus cut through the chase of this young rich ruler to get to the real issue concerning that a young man failed to have no other God before him. Jesus tells him to sell, you know the story, sell everything, give it to the poor, and follow him. But the rich young ruler, Bible says he went away sorrowful because he was unwilling to depart with his possession. Lord have mercy. So, not only was this manager required to pay a full accounting, but this manager knew he was guilty. Hmm? Look now, he, he knew he was guilty. All he had to do was confess 
And then he said, look, then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? Confess, man, just confess. That's all he had to do. I know that truth hurts. Truth hurts, don't it? Truth hurts. He, he didn't want to confess. He said, what shall I do for my Lord take away me from his tuition? He said, I, I can't dig. He was not willing to dig, not willing to be demoted to a field laborer and to serve in such a low capacity. He had been up here so long to where he couldn't just see himself go back to a lower status. What about that pride? Man, pride is something else. Pride. He was too prideful. He said, I couldn't dig. Then he said, I, I, I can't beg. He was too proud. He was too proud to leave the Lord and openly beg because he said he would be ashamed. It was a shame for you, my brother. But all you had to do was confess. But Lord, it was me. I had done the wrong. Confession is the first step in salvation, isn't it? Romans 10 and 9. That if thou confess with thy mouth, see, I have done wrong. See, how many of you, can you say that? I have done wrong. I did the sin. I did it, I did it, I did it. Then you turn to Lord have mercy. Repentance, that's all he had to do. He was too proud to beg forgiveness of the Lord, too proud to be known as a repentant embezzler or a sinner. See? Begging for forgiveness was the manager's only hope. Wow. Proverbs 28 and 13. Just about finished. He that covereth his sin, what? Shall not prosper. But whoso, there it is, confesseth and forsaketh them shall have what? Mercy. How many of you know mercy will suit your case? That's all you got to say. Lord, have mercy. See, just like that multivitamin. Got all the vitamins in it. A, B, C, D, E. That, yeah, that one a day vitamin. When you said, Lord, have mercy. That's God fixing everything that you need. That's that one a day multiple vitamin. Lord, have mercy on me. See? So look, not only did the manager, he knew he was guilty, but he, he decided what to do. He would forget the Lord and court the favor and return of men. He did what he could do to secure him on himself. He led them to be dishonest. Wow. He, he went to the favor of men. He chose money and men over the Messiah. Yeah, that's what he resulted to. Yeah. Money, power, and respect. That's what he chose. Instead of going back to God or his manager, asking for forgiveness, he went to them. And then he was trying to persuade them to do likewise. Look what he said. I'm resolved what to do, that when I'm put out of my stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Wow. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? Mm, mm, mm. So really, in a way, roundabout way, he was stealing. How many religionists mislead others through false teaching, causing so many not to use their lives and gifts for God? A lot of folk can't see God, can't be used by God because they're looking at others. They value others' opinion so much so where they forget about what God said. And that's a dangerous position to be in. When you are a stumbling block for your brother and your sister, they would do better. 
but because you're in their ears all the time. They, they, they can't hear the Holy Spirit. They can't hear God but you because you ain't talking godly stuff. See what I'm saying? That's a dangerous position to be in. That's what I'm saying. The manager misled others to benefit himself to secure his position and livelihood. And he did it in a most shrewd way, a way that was pleasing and profitable to the debtors. See, he gave them a break so he could get a break from them when he needed them. See, because, all because he was just too mean and too prideful to ask for forgiveness of his manager, his supervisor. He went away from him and went to men and popularity. All because he wanted favors from others. Wow. Those are lessons that we can learn not to do. Malachi chapter 2 verse 8. Look at this. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble. Uh oh. At the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. The priests and other leaders of Malachi's day, listen, failed to walk their talk. Not talk the talk, but walk their talk. There were accusations of their hypocrisy, treachery in the home, profanity in the sanctuary, mixed marriages, rampant divorce, and of course, false teaching. God expects us as leaders and ministry leaders alike to incarnate the life their followers should live. That's why Paul said on one occasion, follow me as I follow Christ. You got to make sure your brother and sister, if you're going to follow anybody, make sure they're following Christ. That's why an old saying is said, well, if you want to be rich, you got to hang around the rich. You got to see what they're doing. See what I'm saying? So we as Christians, if we are in the way, if we are following God's way and plan and purpose and destiny for our lives, then of course, because people are watching you and I. They are. But those ministers of that day was corrupt and leaders was corrupt. But we are the one, if we want to exemplify and be an example of Christ and want others to listen to us and follow us, there's a certain lifestyle that you and I have to live. That's it, plain and simple. That, that, that there's certain things, I know Facebook is good. It's a good thing. But there's certain things you just don't, you just don't put yourself out there on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? As good as Facebook is, it is good. It can be used for the good. See? Now you see everything on it. Our children killing one another, just outright shooting, and, and they, they filming, and it's on Facebook, TikTok and all that, doing crazy stuff. See? We've got to demonstrate the desired lifestyle because people do what people see. We as leaders are models before they are ministers, mentors, or managers, or stewards. But they caused, in Malachi's day, many to stumble due to their poor example. Lord have mercy. Just about through. We can learn a lot from this unjust steward as to what not to do. As to what not to do. Because be it pastor, call the role preacher. Be it minister, deacon, missionary, usher, hostess, custodian, trustee, finance committee person, minister of music, choir member, media personnel, culinary person, musician, all of us are indebted to the Lord. You got it? That's good stuff. Our faithfulness speaks volume. 
where does our stewardship line up with the Lord? Where does it line up? Think about it. I want you to think about it. Where does it measure up in our sight of God? We owe him far more than we can estimate. Each of us has his or her own special indebtedness. We all owe more than we can expect or hope to pay. This steward, he chose man, money, and manipulation instead of the Messiah. But when you think about it, Jesus paid it all. So if he paid it all, why, why not rely fully on him and the blood of Jesus? Door of the church is open. Bless him from an unjust steward. Are we unjust in our stewardship? Are we all we can be in the Lord? Hey, I'm looking at self too. That's the question of the day. God is asking us. Are you being what I want you to be? Are you doing what I want you to do? Are you fully committed? If the answer is no, then what we have to do it's not what the unjust steward did, which was, he didn't repent. We can repent today. And we can go back to God. The Lord, I've sinned and fallen short. Lord, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me, Lord. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. He will hear your prayer. And those who are watching by Facebook, YouTube, what have you, if you're watching and you've heard this message, this parable about the unjust steward, and you know that you have been unjust in your way and in your serving the Lord, and you know there's room for improvement. You can repent and go back to God. Mean it from your heart. Sunday school lesson, we cannot allow sin to have rule and authority over our lives. All those old habits and desires that, that picks at us or try to get us back to that life of sin. We got to make a choice. That is to continue to follow Jesus, continue to be steadfast and unmoved. Lord, I'm not listening to this devil. He ain't talking about that. Lord, I'm going to follow you. We offer Christ to you today. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. Yes, we offer. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He'll give you brand new He'll life. He'll give you brand new life. Life abundantly. Life abundantly. So come. So Hallelujah. 
to the name Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, O oh God, that you paid it all, Jesus. And whereas, Lord, we don't have to be the same. We don't have to do the same. We don't have to live that same old lifestyle. Because we are a new creature in you. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. God, we thank you now. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for enabling me to, to teach your word in a manner to where you are glorified and your people edified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It's not about me. I'm just a willing vessel, willing to be used of you. And we thank you now. Thank you for all of our visitors today, Lord. Pray, God, that you give them traveling grace back to that destination, all of your people. And Lord, those who are watching by Facebook and YouTube, pray God that, Lord, they hear you. And Lord, become better as it relates to being a child of God. I give you the praise. Now may the grace of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide be with you all henceforth and forever. Let us all say amen. amen. Oh, co communion. That's right. I have my eyes. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, we still here. I got caught up, y'all. That's all right. That's right. Check this out. Lord, I'm sorry. I ain't shame. See, I can say I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you. We serve a good God. Yes, sir. Amen. Everyone been served? upon us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Oh, God, because we have sinned against thee and thee alone. Have mercy, Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he break it, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. He did eat. Up saying this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. To God be the glory. Amen. All right, now let us stand. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide be with y'all henceforth and forever. Let us all say amen. amen. Go in peace.